Good afternoon, everyone. This is Samantha Wolf from the Law Offices of Samantha Wolf. Thanks for stopping into watching a video. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about our office and about the employees who work here because I think they're pretty fantastic. And I always think when you call in to a new office that you may be unfamiliar with, it's helpful to know the people that you're talking to who's on the other end. So I thought perhaps I would show you some pictures and just introduce you to our staff here. So I'm actually going to share my screen here so that we can switch over. There we go. Okay, so I thought it might be helpful for everyone to know where our office is located. So the office is at 20 East 6th Street, Suite 206 in Waynesboro. And this is the front of our building. So if you're driving down East 6th Street and you get to this part of the complex, there is parking right out front and you're welcome to park there. And then you're going to come in under the maroon awning under the Landix complex sign. You'll walk straight in. Um, Sharon is the wonderful gal at DL George who sits at the reception desk off to the right. And when you get there, instead of hopping on the elevator, you're actually going to make a left and walk down the hall. You'll pass some beautiful old paintings, Civil War style paintings. You'll pass that and then you're going to get to a water fountain. When you get there, there's going to be a hallway that goes off to your right. And we're right down that hallway. So again, we're at 20 East 6th Street, Suite 206 in Waynesboro. And our number that you can reach us at is 717-655-2676. That's 717-655-2676. And this is a picture of the staff here. So we have, I'm sitting in the chair in the center, and then Sandy is standing as you're looking at the picture. She is off to the left in the blue shirt. Amy's in the white shirt in the middle, and Tammy is in the one on the right. So we have Sandy Davis, Amy Meek, and Tamara Seacrest. She goes by Tammy. So the staff here, um, Sandy worked for Tucker Maxwell, the attorney um, that I actually interned with when I was in law school. Uh, Sandy has worked, had worked for Tucker for over 50 years. Amy is our marketing gal, so she does a lot of the coordinating for our videos and anything that's on our social media. Amy is always our contact person there. And then Tammy works in our estate administration department. She's the paralegal, and she actually worked for Tucker since 1985. So just a little bit about Sandy. So we know that she worked for Tucker for over 50 years. She works in our office three days a week. She is the receptionist. So when you're walking down that hallway, you're going to go through uh, an archway that has, you know, the oak wood finish. And um, immediately to the left is our reception area. And Sandy usually sits there behind the desk. She works at our office three days a week. Usually she's in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And she answers our phone. She's our first friendly voice voice who answers. And she also drafts some documents and some needed support for Tammy and I for the estate administration and for the estate planning side of things. She's also one of our notaries. And um, so this is Sandy. We love working with Sandy. Um, she's fantastic. And we hope that she never retires. Then we have Tammy. So Tammy began working for Tucker in 1985. She was born and raised in Waynesboro, and she handles our estate administration in our office. And she also was one of our notaries. She provides so much great help when we're dealing with families who are administering a loved one's estate. So Tammy is our contact there and um, handles all of the estates, helps get everything in order, um, communicates with the client. Uh, and we really appreciate all that Tammy does. She has some great systems in place that allow her to work really efficiently. And I feel like we have a great system set up that allows us to administer estates much more quickly and efficiently than I've seen a lot of offices handle in my experience. And I've worked at a couple of different law offices. And I think that what Tammy um, has been able to do with our estate administration is really top notch. Then Amy, she actually began working at Maxwell Site Law Offices in 2017. Uh, she previously had worked at an insurance company. She was born and raised in Waynesboro, and she handles our marketing and client relationships. So Amy kind of does two different areas. When we are doing trust work and there's some funding that needs to be done, Amy is the person who coordinates all of our funding and gets the paperwork submitted and communicates with the company, makes sure we have all the signature plates 
pages in order, get them all out to the beneficiaries and the children as needed. Amy also does schedule some appointments for us because Sandy's only here three days a week. Amy also answers our phones. She's our second uh, friendly voice that you're going to hear. So she does some scheduling as well. And then the other part of her job is marketing. So she's the person who helps coordinate, especially when we're doing virtual seminars, those type of things. Amy is our gal who handles all of that. And then this is my bio. Um, so I actually graduated from Greencastle, Greencastle Antrim High School, and um, went to Penn State for my undergrad. Um, and then after that, I actually had a journalism degree and realized that that's not really what I wanted to do. So I actually took the LSATs and I've thought that, well, if I get a high enough score, then I will apply to law school. If I get in, then I'll consider going. So when all of that happened and I did get into law school, I thought, you know, I really enjoy writing. And so maybe this is something that I want to do. So I applied to law school, uh, got in and then, um, my first year I took a tax class and I really loved it. And I thought, you know, I think I want to do something that helps families, minimize whatever tax, whether it be federal or inheritance tax. I just want to really make sure that families out there have good information about how to make sure they're paying the least amount of tax possible. While I was in law school, they encouraged us to have internships during the summer. And I had had Judy Maxwell, Mrs. Maxwella, as my Latin teacher for all four years at high school. She was my Latin teacher. And every so often she would mention that her husband was an estate planning attorney in Weensboro. And I had actually been over to Mrs. Maxwell's house and had met uh, Tucker before when I was in high school and taking Latin. So my first year of law school, when it was time to apply for summer internships, I just randomly sent Tucker a letter saying, um, you know, if you need a legal intern for the summer, I'd be happy to do that. And I was shocked and really delighted when he called and said, yes, I'd love to. So I actually drove home one weekend and met with Tucker up in his study. And he was so gracious and so kind. And he said that I would, you know, would be able to come work the summer after my first year of law school. And then I really enjoyed it and learned so much from him that when I was looking after my second year of law school about internships, I actually reached out again and said, is there any chance you need someone this summer too? So I actually interned with Tucker back in 2000, the summer of 2006 and the summer of 2007, uh, when they were, when um, Maxwell, when Tucker's office was in the old Wayne building in on the main street there in Waynesboro. And that's when I actually met Sandy and Tammy. I worked with both of them, both of those summers, really, really enjoyed what I was doing. And Tucker was so influential and uh, taught me so much those two summers. When once I graduated from law school, I decided that I wanted to get my LLM in taxation. So I moved out to Texas, to Dallas, Texas, and went to SMU, Southern Methodist University, and got my legal master's in taxation. Now, around that time was when the market was crashing. So in 2009, when I was applying for jobs, there weren't really a lot of legal jobs. So until I was actually able to find a legal job, I worked as a janitor and um, cleaned toilets, changed soap dispensers, all of those fun things. So I was thrilled when I had been applying. I'd been applying for months and just hadn't been able to find a job. And um, Steinbacher, Steinbacher Good on your check in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, was looking for an attorney. They had the Marcellus gas boom happening up in northern Pennsylvania, and they were looking for a tax attorney. So I applied there. Uh, was offered the job. And so I moved up to Williamsport, Pennsylvania in 2010 and worked at Steinbacher Good on Your Check for about seven and a half years there in Williamsport. And what I did up there was I did a lot of tax planning. I did asset protection planning, did some gas lease planning. And one uh, February, I was doing a speaking engagement for the Pennsylvania Bar Institute about oil and gas lease planning and Tucker was attending. He was an attendee. And so I went up afterwards and just chatted with him a little bit and just told him that my family still lived in the area around Waynesboro and Fairfield and that I was looking to move back. And so in 2017, I joined Maxwell Sipe Law Offices. It was in October of 2017 and worked there and really loved just being back home and being around my family. 
Um, when Maxwell Sleep Law Office dissolved, I then began solo practice in July of 2020. And I just really enjoy my job. I enjoy meeting with clients and getting to talk to them and help families. I do also present with the Pennsylvania Bar Institute. I have noted there some of the uh, sessions that I have taught. And then I have co-authored two books. Um, the first is Protect Your Legacy, What You Really Need to Know for the Second Half of Life. And I do have copies of that in our office. So if anybody who's listening wants a compliment, copy, you're always welcome to call our office and we're happy to send it to you. But I wrote two chapters in there dealing with asset preservation and how to protect assets, especially when you're looking at the second half of life. And my two chapters dealt with business succession planning. Although I, all of the topics in the book, I am, uh, I am knowledgeable about and know how to do all those different techniques. I was just asked to uh, write about business succession planning. I had some personal experience with my dad and his family farm. So it uh, was helpful when I was looking at ways to incorporate a real life example. So those are the two chapters I wrote in there. And then I am in the uh, one of the authors of the Pennsylvania Trust Guide. And the Pennsylvania Trust Guide is a book that accountants and other attorneys use in Pennsylvania as a reference tool. If you have a question about trusts and need to know the answer, I, along with another attorney, wrote all of the material for that. So, um, so yeah, if you ever want a good read about Pennsylvania trusts, you can look at the Pennsylvania Trust Guide. This is a picture of the book. So on the left, we have what you really need to know for the second half of life. And on the back cover, then we have listed all of the authors and I'm on the bottom right. And then on the right hand picture is a picture of the Pennsylvania Trust Guide, the fourth edition. And that's what I co-author. And again, that's more of the technical side of things that accountants, CPAs, and attorneys can use as like a desk reference regarding trusts. So that's a little bit of background as far as our office. We do offer free initial consultations. So our office is designed to be client focused. And when we were looking at a way to make sure that we keep that at the forefront of our minds, our office and um, everyone here kind of came together and we came up with a mission statement. So our tagline at our office is providing mindful legal direction for you and your future generations. And we're able to do that because we follow four principles. And the four principles are the C, it spells out care. So the C is collaborating with your accountant and financial advisor to create the best team for you. So we feel like that in order to make sure we have the, the best estate plan for you, the way we're able to do that is really working with your accountant and financial advisor and creating a team that always puts your interests first. So we never want to recommend a legal method or technique that would result in more tax for you. So even though I do have my LLM and tax, we really do welcome and encourage accountants to be part of the discussion and make sure that we are incorporating all of your concerns, your tax concerns, making sure that we're minimizing tax across the board. And then financial advisors, we really appreciate their support and their collaboration as well, because we know that financial advisors have done an excellent job of working with their client and creating and saving and putting forth a great financial plan. So we really feel like our job as the legal side is just to come alongside those professionals and be part of a team so that we can make sure that we're doing the best that we can for the client. It's really client focused. And so we wanted to make sure to put an emphasis of working with those other trusted professionals. The second part of it or a second principle that allows us to be providing mindful legal direction for you and your future generations is advocating for you and your family in times of crisis. So whether that be that you're a child and your parents are at the age where they're looking at long-term care or nursing home care, or whether it be that you and your spouse are looking at mm -hmm. long-term care or nursing home care, we want to really advocate for you and make sure that you are getting the best services and find the best fit for you. And so we really take a lot of pride in advocating in those times when maybe you aren't familiar with the procedure or the different people that you need to be in contact with. Our office is happy to come alongside and make sure that your needs are being met where you're at. The third principle is the R, which is the reinforcing your estate plan with asset protection strategies. And what I've noticed since moving back in 2017 is that here in this area, 
we don't do a lot of asset protection, which there's so many great legal techniques that we can use to protect assets for husband and wife. If one spouse is going into a nursing home or even to protect it for that next generation, making sure that the assets that you've worked so hard for are protected in a way that makes sense, but also gives you flexibility for different options regarding your care. And so we're able to do that again, working with the financial advisor at different investment opportunities, but also using legal techniques with irrevocable trust. And our goal is, again, not really to um, divest yourself of assets, but more to protect using legal techniques to protect your assets, to make sure that whatever level of care you need and whatever facility you want to be in, that you can actually qualify and be admitted into that while protecting assets, especially for a spouse, if we're able to do that. And then the last thing, the E there is ensuring efficient administration upon your death. And I've been practicing, like I said, I passed the bar or uh, was admitted to the bar in 2008. So I've been practicing for over a decade now and at multiple different law firms. And one of the things that is really frustrating for families is when a loved one passes away, not only do you have the emotional concerns there and issues that you're dealing with, but the last thing you want to do is deal with the legal issues and have your assets tied up or, you know, inheritances tied up in a long drawn out estate administration. So our office is really committed to providing the most efficient administration that we can upon your death. And some of that means planning techniques prior to death to make sure that we are minimizing taxes and legal interventions as much as we can. But some of it is just making sure that we are addressing your concerns and keeping the file moving as quickly as possible. Um, I keep hearing horror stories of estates that have lasted years and years and years, and that's really not necessary in most cases. So our what our job is, is to really do it as efficiently as possible. And we really try to do that and work with uh, executors and the personal representatives to do that. We really do consider it a privilege to serve you. And we really are so thankful when clients trust us enough to help them in these difficult times. And so thank you for allowing us to be able to represent you. And we hope that this mission statement and the four principles here that allow us to provide mindful legal direction for you and your future generations, we hope that it, that demonstrates how much we do care and want to make it a client centered experience for you and your family. So what services do we offer here? So we do a lot of transactional work and we do a lot of pre-planning as well as estate administration. So I have nine things here. That's not to say that we don't do other things, but these are nine things that we really have a strong focus on and we have good systems in place that allow us to be very efficient and manage the file very efficiently. So the first is estate planning. So that would be, you know, a basic will, whether it be husband and wife need a basic will and need that to coordinate with their beneficiary designations. We're happy to help you do that. And so we do estate planning. And I will say that our estate planning isn't going to look like some of the estate planning that you'll see with other attorneys. We do have every client who comes in, we're going to wreck recommend five basic documents. So um, four of them are while you're living. If something would happen and you're unable to make certain decisions, we have four powers of attorneys that we recommend. We actually recommend them as four separate documents. And I'm going to devote a session to each document as an explanation as to why we do that. But we have a financial power of attorney, a healthcare power of attorney, a living will, a mental health power of attorney. Those are our four power of attorney documents. And like I said, they're four separate documents. And then we do the will. So the last will and testament. So that's five documents for each individual person. And we recommend that for every client who walks through the door. We really do feel like those five documents offer the best protection for you. The second service that we're proud to offer is asset protection planning. And that's what I was talking about with nursing homes, as well as any other asset that you might be wanting to protect. So we have a lot of businesses, small businesses in our area, and then the asset protection and strategies, we're happy to implement that as part of your business plan and make sure that your business is protected from any creditors. We know that you probably have great insurance coverage, but we want to offer the best legal methods to support minimizing your risk 
for businesses. So we do asset protection planning for businesses and individuals. We also do special needs planning. There are a lot of families out there, mine included, who have members who have special needs. And so we want to make sure that we're addressing that. It could be that they're able to qualify for certain benefits. It could, it could be that when mom and dad pass away, they want to make sure that a child who is qualifying for certain benefits can still receive those benefits while also receiving their inheritance. So we're able to implement different techniques that allow us to be able to do that. So we're able to do special needs planning for parents to child. So third party is what we call that, meaning that an individual is setting up some sort of plan for an individual with special needs. We're also able to do it if the individual themselves wants to set up something, we're able to do special needs planning that way too. Number four, we do long-term care planning. So that's asset protection planning that's specific to nursing home planning. And in Pennsylvania, there is a five-year look back role, look back period. So we want to make sure that we are planning early enough so that you have the option to protect assets. And what we normally recommend is that people in their 50s and 60s look at long-term care pre-planning so that it's before anybody's needing any care, we're able to put a plan in place that protects certain assets for husband and wife. And we do that because if husband and wife, if somebody needs care, there are obviously certain assets that are exempt, like the primary residence and retirement of the community spouse, being the spouse that doesn't need nursing home care. There's also a vehicle that can be exempt as well, but otherwise the assets would be available for nursing home care. And so what we want to do, for, especially for husband and wife, is make sure that if one spouse goes into a facility, the spouse that doesn't need that level of care is still living in the community, is not financially compromised. And in Pennsylvania in 2020, the spouse that's in the community is allowed to keep about $128,000 and the rest can be used for care. So when we're talking about long-term care pre-planning, it's really protecting assets so that if somebody needs care, the spouse can maintain their current standard of living or not be financially compromised if one spouse would go into a facility. Which leads us to number five, which is Medicaid planning. And our office does do Medicaid planning. And that would be a situation in which somebody is in a facility or needs to be admitted into a facility and maybe did not engage in pre-planning prior to that. So we're happy to help people fill out the Medicaid applications and get them to qualify for benefits. And it can be a pretty um, daunting task. I don't know if anybody who's listening has ever had to do a Medicaid application, but usually it's a binder full of supporting documentation that is needed in order to qualify for Medicaid benefits. And so our office really does the heavy, heavy lifting there and compiles all of that information along with the Medicaid application. Number six, we do business creation management. So whether it be a limited liability company, an LLC, a partnership, a corporation, or an S corporation, our office is able to create the business through the Pennsylvania Department of State and then work with the accountant to obtain the EIN and file the taxes and then get all of the governing documents in place, as well as any required minutes and any other legal documents that are needed. And we're also able to do that if you have already created a business, but maybe you don't have things set up quite right. We're also happy to go back and make sure that you have the supporting documents that you need. And then we're also able to do ongoing management, which is if you're required to be holding annual meetings or need uh, documents, legal documents on a regular basis, we're also able to help with that management as well. Number seven, we're also able to do business succession planning. So whether it be a family farm or a small business, medium-sized business here in the area is what we see most of the time is passing that on to the next generation in a way that minimizes taxes, but also make sure that the business is going to continue for the next generation. So, and I have a personal experience with a family farm. So this is an area of law that really hits close to home. And I think is really important and is really vital to make sure that family farms and small businesses can continue through the next generation. And so we're going to help put a plan in place, whether it be getting financial of power of attorneys in place, or whether it be actually doing the documentation to transfer it to the next generation, our office is happy to help with that. Well, on the other side of things, we're also 
able to help with the estate administration and trust administration. So if someone passes away, our office is able to help administer that estate. And again, we are happy and welcome the opportunity to work with financial advisors to ensure that, again, minimal hassle and minimum tax is going to be what happens when someone passes away. And so Tammy at our office is the estate administration paralegal. And so I work with Tammy to help administer an estate as efficiently as we can. Then number nine is dealing with taxation. Because I do have that degree in tax and I'm a little bit of a tax nerd, we're happy to help minimize taxes. So it used to be that federal estate and federal gift was the type of taxes that we were addressing to try to minimize them. The federal exemption is so high right now that a lot of what we're doing is income tax planning and trying to minimize income tax that people may be experiencing. So we're happy to help with that. And really those techniques go into all of the other planning that we're doing. So because I do enjoy taxes so much, any of the other areas, whether it be state planning, asset protection, or business succession planning, we're always going to discuss the tax ramifications and the best way to minimize taxes. So those are the services that we offer. Again, we do also do some real estate things and some other um, legal issues. So we always welcome anybody who wants to call and ask if we do something. But if I were to narrow it down to nine things that we do, this would be the nine items. Okay, this next slide just talks about goals. And so what I wanted to put on as part of this presentation was just, you know, what type of goals do most clients have? And so I just jotted down I know every time I'm meeting with a client, these are goals that I have and I ask a client to rank them or if a client, you know, mentions certain things, I always want to figure out, you know, what is most important. So most of the time when I meet with people, of course, they want to minimize taxes, but there are also so many other things that we want to do. You know, we want to minimize taxes, but we also want to create a plan for those future individuals, that future a legacy that you might be trying to make sure passes on to the next generation. And so having a clear goal or clear plan is really what our office wants to do is to help provide that for you so that you can make sure that you are protected, your spouse is protected and your children are protected. So again, I put this on here as you're looking through this, it might be something you want to take a minute and, and contemplate. How would you rank these goals? Okay. So I hope that this presentation was helpful. I just wanted to take about, you know, 30 minutes and just talk about our office, what type of planning we do here and what we would really love to help you with. So again, we're located at 20 East 6th Street. We're in suite 206 and our contact number is 717-655-2676. And we do offer free initial consultations. And what that means is that when someone calls in and requests a meeting with me, we block off about an hour and a half on my schedule. And I'm happy to review any documents that you bring with you and talk to you about if there needs to be any changes and if so, why and what changes we would recommend. And then at the end of that hour and a half, I quote, a, typically it's a flat fee of what it would be for our office to make those changes or make those recommendations or draft those documents. And usually I outline, you know, how long does the, is that going to take? We talk through, you know, what is the process going to look like for you? So I always encourage folks to call and schedule that free initial consultation. Don't be afraid to meet with the attorney just because you're afraid there's going to be a charge. We really want to make it client focused and be able to answer any questions and provide any information that would be helpful when you're doing an estate plan. And we always welcome the financial advisor and the accountant being part of that meeting as well, as well as any decision maker. So if there are children that you would like to bring to that appointment, because you feel like they would be important decision makers in the process, then we're happy to have them at any point in the process, but you're welcome to bring them to the initial consultation if that would be helpful for you. And so we really look forward to the opportunity to serve Waynesboro and the surrounding areas. And we look forward to meeting you and helping you and your estate um, make sure it's efficient. And again, we really want to be providing mindful legal direction to you and your future generations. So thank you. And we look forward to meeting you.